right into um ufc 299 you were in attendance oh uh, that was a blast I, I was at ufc 299 it was an it was an it was an incredible environment packed house loud as hell some great fights i mean the the championship fight was rather anticlimactic it was kind of what i expected um with sugar sean o'malley winning by decision he landed a knee on cheeto vera's face that makes me wonder that cheeto vera has like iron in his face because i don't think anyone else would have withstood that knee he need him i mean when you heard the, I was there. You didn't hear the noise there. But when I watched it back on replay, the cracking sound that he made on this guy's face, it's remarkable he didn't go down. And he didn't even go down. It's, it's unbelievable how tough Cheeto Vera is. But O'Malley looked fantastic. However, O'Malley calling out to Tupor, Ilya Toporia after the fight was pathetic. You want to call out the 45 champion? First of all, Toporia will knock you on your ass. That's the first thing. He, he, he throws with massive power. But secondly, you want, you're doing this because you don't want to fight Marab. Marab Devalashvili, you don't want to fight him because he'll take you down for five rounds. And this won't be an Aljo situation. Marab never stops. So maybe the, the, I don't know what the UFC does if they're trying to milk the Sugar Sean train, but that's going to, if he fights Marab next, he's losing. He's going to lose. And it, it's going to be ugly. It'll be a dominating loss, in fact. Um, that said, the, the, the three fights I want to talk about specifically are Dustin Poirier and Benoit Saint Denis. That fight was unbelievable. Poirier walked in as a, a plus one eighty five. He was an underdog to the twelfth ranked guy in the, in the world, a guy who hadn't beaten a soul in the top five, top eight, top ten. He's in the number twelve because he hasn't beaten anybody yet, but he's been putting people out. And the week of the fight, there was a photo of Benoit Saint Denis with a mark on his head that looked like a staph infection. In fact, most people presumed it was. Now, for those who that don't know, staph infections require antibiotics and, and it, can, it can drain you, can sap you, the whole nine. But you know what? You still have a duty. If you don't want to fight because of that staph infection, guess what? Don't fight. But he did fight. So guess what? If, you can, if you're in the, in the cage, I don't want to hear about excuses after the fact. I don't want to hear about your training camp. I don't want to hear about anything. I know that first round, Benoit St. Denis came out like fire. He was attacking Poirier, throwing bombs looking for takedowns, got, got his back, couldn't finish him. Poirier gets up, takedown, Poirier's getting up. Poirier's taking some shots. And in the second round, it looked like Benoit St. Denis burned his tank in the first round, which to me shows a massive level of inexperience. Because if you know that you have this issue, or if you, I mean, he claimed it, the problem is he claimed it after the fight. He said, yeah, I was on antibiotics and I'm so sorry, I only had a one round of energy. And bro, you fucking were going balls to the wall in that round. So you shouldn't have gone balls to the wall so quickly because as soon as you went balls to the wall, second round, Poirier cracks him. Middle of the second round, I mean, he cracked him. He went, Poirier was going for guillotines left and right. Like, why will you please stop going for these damn guillotines? And he kept jumping guillotines. And, um, but eventually he caught him with one. He caught him with a big, a big shot and then dropped him real quick. He went in for a takedown again, got him off, knocked him out. He knocked him, starched him out cold. The place went fucking bananas because Poirier does train down here. So, you know, this is like home for him. It was an amazing, amazing fight. I loved it for Poirier. And now there's talk of him being the next fight for uh, Islam Makachev in June because uh, Makachev's trainer uh, tweeted out that, you know, that could be the fight. I don't know if it is. I think we have to see what happens to Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway because Gaethje did put Poirier to sleep in their last fight. And see how they come out health wise. And if what you know, if Gaethje wins that fight and he's healthy and he can go in June, I don't see how you don't give him that fight because he just did beat Poirier. But I'd love to see Poirier fight um Makachev. Uh I thought if he had lost to Benoit Saint Denis, I think he would have retired. But yeah, he was incredible. I, I'm very happy to see that win. <clears throat> Another fight down on that card was um Jack Della Madalena against Gilbert Burns. I thought Gilbert Burns was dominating the fight. He was controlling top position. Madalena hits hard. It turns out that Madalena broke his arm in that fight. In the third round, with about two minutes to go, Burns has top position against the cage. I don't know what he did, but it seemed like he tried to advance it and he made a mistake, which was shocking because Gilbert Burns is a jiu-jitsu, a, a, a black belt jiu-jitsu expert. 
And whatever he did, Della Maddalena was able to escape, flip him, get to his feet. And Gilbert Burns goes directly in for another takedown and catches a knee square, square to the face. And that just fucked him up. And basically turtled him up and Della Maddalena was just hammer fisted him out. You know, just smashed him out, stopped the fight with two minutes to go in the fight. I thought Burns was about to win that fight. And he went from about to win that fight to knocked out. Like he was busted up. I wonder if he comes back and fights again. I I'm curious. I don't know if he comes back to fight again. Um, and the final fight, now the MVP Kevin Holland fight was embarrassing. I was very disappointed in that performance. So I'll leave that, leave that one alone. But the final fight was that Curtis Blades, Jalton Almeida fight. And I think that you're going to have the, the Curtis Blades. Almeida went for takedowns. He was basically ragdolling Blades in the first round, which was really surprising because of Blades' wrestling ability. But in the second round, he goes for a takedown again. He doesn't even throw a punch. That's what's really – Almeida doesn't even throw a punch. Goes for a takedown again. Blades <laughs> able, sprawls on the cage and just starts throwing hammers right at him, just hammering him. Knocked him out with hammer fists. And ended that streak of Almeida. And I think that we're going to probably see a Curtis Blades, Tom Aspinall rematch because Aspinall did lose to Blades, albeit it was by injury. Blades does have that W and he's already called out Aspinall. And I think that's the fight that we may see next at heavyweight. Overall, amazing card. Uh, Donald Trump showed up after the first fight. The place went bananas. <laughs> And people wonder why. People wonder why. Well, Miami Dade, for those of you you don't know, I mean, it's heavy Hispanic area. So if you're not familiar with Cuban people, a lot of Cuban people are Republicans, heavy Republican. But beyond that, consider the venue. The venue is MMA, and the tickets cost a fortune. So if you do the math, people are paying over a thousand dollars for tickets to this event. You're gonna get a Republican contingent <laughs> there, and. Last year was the same thing when Masvidal fought. Place went bananas. So that's always entertaining because, you know, Donald Trump acts like a star <laughs> and he, he starts he's waving. <laughs> it's just whatever. It, it always it, it adds a level of like, why? Are, I was sitting by, in front of people that were by, in front of people that were from New York. Like, why are people going crazy? I said, because we're in Miami. And it's a UFC event. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Like, do you, you, how much did your tickets cost again? <laughs> they're not free <laughs> they're not free so all in all great weekend thank you for watching come on now the podcast please be sure to subscribe like comment and ring that bell so you get up to the minute updates when we publish new content you can also find us on facebook and instagram at come on now podcast and x and tiktok at come on now pod thank you again for supporting this channel